So I want to talk about Russell Westbrook for a minute because this season for him has been kind of interesting. He started off with the Lakers and had yet another terrible start to the season. Everyone was criticizing him. Then during that trade deadline period, he gets moved to the Clippers and a lot of people didn't know if he was going to do good. Me personally, I knew there was potential, especially for the fact that Westbrook's career was far from over. And so far with the Clippers, I would say he's been pretty dominant, but it's this playoff series versus the Suns where I think he's shown everyone who he truly is. On the Lakers, it seemed like Russell Westbrook just could not do anything right and was the guy that was constantly chasing triple doubles, which I don't know how true that is. I'm just telling you that's what the narrative that people had. But on the Clippers, it's a different story. With the Clippers, he's been able to be the third option. Well, it's second until Paul George got hurt, but he's also been very good on the defensive side and it's finally starting to get highlighted. So far in round one of the playoffs, the Phoenix Suns and Clippers have had a pretty good series and it's tied at one to one and it's headed to LA. But in these first two games, I've seen a couple things that I do want to talk about from Westbrook. I knew that Westbrook wasn't going to be the type of guy to average like 20 points per game and shoot crazy well from the field. I knew that if Westbrook got hot, he was going to go off that game and sure enough, that's what happened last night. But even scoring aside, there's other things that are really impactful about his game that most people are now just realizing. Look, I know Kawhi Leonard's a great player and the Clippers have a lot of other guys on their roster that can make a big impact, but I'm telling you, if the Clippers win this series, it is going to be because of one man. And I'm obviously talking about Russell Westbrook and the main reason is his defensive presence. I was absolutely shocked in game one when I saw Westbrook was shutting down KD and really the majority of the time that KD was scoring was when Westbrook was not on the court or in the area of him. And even in game two, I knew the moment Westbrook came out, KD was going to start being a lot more aggressive and sure enough he was. Now I don't know if it's just fair to base off just KD because KD has been getting double teamed a lot during this series which I did expect and of course there's a reason why Booker has been absolutely going off. And since we're talking about Booker, I cannot talk about this series in Westbrook and not talk about that play in game one. That block that Westbrook had on Booker and the way he threw the ball on him and made it go out of bounds so it would be the Clippers ball was one of the smartest plays I've ever seen. I will say though Booker did not help his case when he was clearly complaining to the ref but honestly I don't think he would have been able to stop that regardless. Like even if Booker was 100% focused on Westbrook I still think it would have went out of bounds and it would have been a game winning play for the Clippers. Now it's hard for me to say that Westbrook is going to shut down Booker or that he has been because again a majority of the matchups that Westbrook's been getting is been versus Kevin Durant which isn't that surprising to me. I expected him to be the guy that they were most focused on but yet it hasn't really worked out for them. Now something else that I want to talk about has been Westbrook shooting because in game one this man shot what like three for 19 but he had the game winning plays so I don't think most people are going to remember that but in game two this man shot absolutely well and I think if this becomes a common thing that the Suns might be in trouble. The fact of the matter is that Westbrook is not the best shooter on the team and he never will be. However he's an aggressive driver and he's someone that when he's making his shots he's gonna get hot at the right time. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous that Suns fans thought this series was gonna be over in like four or five games. I knew this was gonna be a good series and sure enough we're seeing just that and the reason why this is happening again is because of Russell Westbrook who's been the biggest X factor on this Clippers team while Paul George has been out. But honestly, even if Paul George was playing, I would still argue that Westbrook would be the X factor of this team. So I want to move away from talking about this series for a sec and kind of just talk about this past year or the past couple years of Westbrook's career. When Russell Westbrook was playing on the Lakers, this man got absolutely destroyed by everyone in the media, fans, you name it, most people were talking bad about him. To say Westbrook's time in LA for the Lakers, I feel like I have to keep clarifying that, but to say that Westbrook's time in LA wasn't an utter hell would be an understatement. It was also during this time that fans thought it was okay to just start shit talking this man like to his face because they thought he wasn't going to do something and then when he would they would back down which I think is hilarious. Oh and I mean it's not like that's actually changed it's still going on to this day. Oh and that Suns fan who tried to fight Westbrook was actually the same guy who did the money thing in the finals so fuck you. Regardless of that I feel like on the Lakers a lot of people just started to treat this man like shit but if you did a little bit of research you would know all the narratives and things that people were saying about him were not true. During Westbrook's time in LA I felt like I made multiple videos defending this man and a lot of people thought I was dumb and they said oh you're just trying to cope for him but in reality I knew something was right because as I looked at the stats you could see that Westbrook's numbers were fairly similar from the year before the only difference was that he was on more display because he was playing for the Lakers versus Washington hell even if we look at the years before when he was on the Rockets and he was on the Thunder Westbrook for the most of his career was never a high volume three-point shooter he was a guy however who would take a lot of shots not that he would make them but he was also someone that had a lot of turnovers but that was okay because that was his play style of course it wasn't going to result in winning which is why a lot of people had that narrative but that was justified but what wasn't justified was people saying his career was over and that he was a bad player oh and the fact that people said he was a locker room cancer was egregious in fact this morning as 
I'm recording this video, I did a poll on my channel asking you guys which video you wanted to see, a Westbrook video or a video about Draymond. And in that poll, I got a comment that really stuck out to me. And I don't blame this guy because I'm sure he's going off just narratives from the media or people that he listens to. Essentially, what this guy was trying to say in his comment is that Westbrook was a talented player, but he was toxic in the LA locker room. Of course, LeBron being his teammate definitely had to do with that factor because LeBron with his teammates isn't exactly a recipe for success. So you know what? Let's talk about this for a sec. During the time of Westbrook's end with the Lakers, there was a narrative going around that he was a locker room cancer and that he was a quote unquote vampire, which I thought was especially funny when clips started coming out of Westbrook being this absolute positive guy. I mean, even historically, if you look at Westbrook, we've seen that he's not a locker room cancer. He's just someone that's very aggressive and wants to win. And I'm not trying to say that like to justify if he's doing anything dumb, because from what I've seen, I haven't seen anything bad, at least from Westbrook's side. But the fact that we had people calling him a vampire and that that dumbass Dave McMahon actually tried to like talk about that like it was a real quote was insane like it seemed like towards the end of his time with the lakers the entire world basically hated this man and they thought his career was over which is why when discussions happened about westbrook possibly joining a new team as a suns fan i I kind of wanted him. And sure enough, I got shit for it because haha, Westbrook's a terrible player. What are you talking about? You don't know what you're saying. But I knew that Westbrook was going to be a great defensive player. I knew that he was one of the most tenacious rebounders in the league. I knew that the energy you were going to get with Westbrook was something that was unmatched that you don't get from most players. And I knew if Westbrook was shooting well one night, that night he was going to go off. I knew that if he was in the right system and he had the right people around him, he could be a great player that could contend to a championship level team. And if Paul George wasn't injured, I'm not gonna lie, I would have been terrified to play the Clippers. I truly do believe if the Suns cannot have the series wrapped up by either Game 5 or Game 6, that Paul George might possibly come back. And with everything I've talked about in this video, I, I think this would go very bad for Phoenix. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you, and this is coming from a Suns fan. At the end of the day, I don't think Westbrook was ever gonna become that MVP player he was in OKC, but to be fair, why would he? Isn't this man like in his late 30s? Also, when he joined the Lakers, he wasn't supposed to be that, and when he joined the Clippers, he also wasn't supposed to be that. But the problem was in LA, he kind of became the second and first option due to injuries. But with the Clippers, even though they've dealt with injuries, the Clippers haven't tried to overuse him. Say what you want about Tyron Lue, but this man is one of the best coaches in the NBA today. And honestly, I think he's been able to utilize Westbrook in a way that most won't. Of course, on the stat sheet, you're going to say, oh, he's playing terrible, but those are box score watchers and we don't pay attention to them. But you would know if you've watched Westbrook on the Clippers, he's made by far more of an impact than he ever ever did with the Lakers. And of course, I know it looks bad that the Lakers are now a playoff team because they got rid of Westbrook, but honestly, I just didn't think he was a good fit for them. Not to mention, we also are not going to pretend like Jared Vanderbilt was not a great pickup and Rui Hachimera was also not a good pickup. Regardless, I'm very happy for Westbrook. I've always liked him as a player and I'm glad that he's finally succeeding with the Clippers. Also, a quick side note, seeing Westbrook yesterday was actually really cool. If you guys didn't know, I went to the Suns and Clippers game last night and I think it's kind of funny that the one game I go to, the Suns beat the Scott Foster Curry. So if you're someone from the Suns and you see this video, yo, you, you gotta give me tickets. I got y'all, man. Now, some of you might be saying, what is the Scott Foster curse? Well, if you didn't know, before last night's game, it had been 14 straight games that Scott Foster had beaten Chris Paul. In fact, it had been damn near 10 years. We were almost at the point where it had been 10 years where Chris Paul last beat Scott Foster in the playoffs. But what is the reason for this and how did we get here? Well, I made a video about it, so you should check it out.